Hello everyone, this is Bobby from Madness Labs. Um, sorry it's been a while since our last little post, but uh, we've been pretty busy, which I guess we can't complain too much about. I just wanted to make a short little video um, to uh, put something on our blog. And uh, this one's going to be about how to pull down a project, um, deeming that we are trying to make a set of tutorial videos. Um, I figure it's pretty important for everyone to know how to work with the different projects that we're hosting on GitHub. So first thing you'll need to do is open up your browser and head on over to our GitHub, github.com forward slash madness labs. Um, and then you can choose any one of our projects. They all um, should work the same. Um, so I'm just going to go into Madness Engineer. Um, this is a WYSIWYG or a um, text editor, basically, much like Word or something like that. Um, and what you're going to do is grab the link over here, copy it to your clipboard, then go ahead and open up Source Tree, and then clone a new repository. Paste that link in there. And then you're going to save it wherever your local web server is. Um, I not going to go into this. I'm assuming that you already have a, a basic skill set um, and have some kind of a web server running, but that's what you're going to do. And I already have this cloned, so it's not going to let me, but that would be your next step. So I'm going to go ahead and open it up here. So then you're going to see the screen here. You're going to see the timeline and all that kind of jazz. Um, hopefully this should look familiar from uh, from our first video. So now we should be able to open it up in Sublime or whatever your preferred program is. However, we support Sublime here, so you can open up the project file. HDDocs Madness Engineer. And I can open up the Sublime project file. And this is going to set up our folders on the left, and it's going to also remember where we were last inside of all the code. And first off, I have to apologize. I, I made a goof in the last video and said that Gulp was a compiler, which it is not. It is actually a command line task runner, which means that it can run things um, from inside of the command prompt with JavaScript. So I've got a nice little gulp file set up here. Um, it handles our compiling, uh, among other things. Uh, also live reloading, things like that. Um, and as a little bonus, um, I figure I will show you guys how to set up an actual virtual host um, just so to make it easier to browse to these projects that you're going to pull down. So the first step would be go into your httpd vhost.conf file um, and in exam that's in c exam apache conf forward slash extra and you're going to open that guy up and it's going to look like a mess but then you should see that there's these commented out virtual host tags you can actually uncomment those 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 uh, hashtags off the front of all these and then you can just copy and paste it um, and make them for every single project that you have to make it a lot easier to navigate around your local host. So I'm just going to copy and paste this guy and we're going to set it up to the document root. So madness engineer forward slash public is where I keep all of the public files and then I can set up madness engineer dot dev that is what I'm going to type in the browser in order to navigate to this project. I'm going to type in the folder path again. And then I would save. I've already got this created though, so again, I will just delete that out. And then what you're going to want to do is grab this guy from Chrome. I'm assuming you're using a good browser. So Chrome has this awesome little thing that allows you to edit your virtual hosts from your machine. So on Windows, it's in your Windows directory, system32, drivers, etc., host, and you open that file, and that will allow you to actually edit the host on your computer. So when I type in this madness or engine.engineer.dev, it's going to allow me to map to my local host. Um, so I actually should already have this, but like I said, it is in your Windows 
system 32, drivers, etc. And there's a host file. You'll select that file and it'll load up in here. And you'll already see that I have quite a few. And there's my Madness Engine, Madness Engineer. There it is, madnessengineer.dev. When you go into the editor, you'll be able to see it. And basically, you're just going to map them all to your local host, 127.0.0.1. And then once you've done that, you will be able to access that after you restart your Apache. So stop it. Start it. And now you will be able to type in the browser, madnessengineer.dev. Okay, and for those of you who have been following along, um, you'll notice that you actually don't get anything. You get a jumbled mess. And that is because the, oh actually no, I, you should see this. However, if you're working on the project, if you make any changes, you'll notice that you're not seeing anything actually pop up. So what you'll need to do is you'll need to actually install all the dependencies for that project. Um, and so you'll want to open it up in command and I've got a nice little plugin called sidebar enhancements for um, Sublime which I strongly suggest that you get and you can right click and go to open run it opens right in the root and you're gonna want to basically run two commands when you pull down a project you're gonna want to run bower or sorry npm install and this um, if you remember from our package managers this is installing JavaScript dependencies that are server-side so this is all of our compiling um, things of that nature. You could do sockets. Um, it also can handle client-side stuff, but generally not the use case we use it for. Then you're going to run the second command, which is gulp install. Now, gulp install is not an actual command like npm install. Um, this is something actually custom. You use node to install gulp, the gulp dependency. And then when I gulp, it finds this gulp file. And in here, there's actually a task called install and then I go ahead and run Bower install that you saw from from the uh, package managers also I copy fonts into the public directory font awesome and glyph icon from bootstrap and then I go ahead and run less which is um, a language that compiles into CSS and I run JavaScript to compile everything into one JavaScript file so we're gonna run that and it's going to do its thing. It takes, uh, I'd say, about a minute or so, depending on your internet connection. And it's going to run all those things. And now you will have a freshly compiled version of the actual project. Now, one more thing I will actually run you through in this, in this very short video. Um, when you're working on these projects, it can get very daunting to save and then have to come in here and run gulp build or, or gulp and have to do this process over and over and over again. So we've made it very easy um, with the live reload plugin through Gulp to be able to actually see your changes live in the browser. So I'm going to go ahead and side screen the browser here. And you can either be in command prompt and run Gulp through here and it's going to start a live reload server. So you'll actually see it'll build all the dependencies, starts a live reload server, and then if you grab the live reload plugin um, from the Google Chrome store, you can actually click this guy, and now they're linked up. And so anything that I change over here, it's going to pick up on, and actually I'll show you that process right now. So if I edit my HTML file for the index page, maybe I want my editor to say set up hello world some gibberish and I save you'll notice it instantly reloads over here and you'll see which item was reloaded inside of the shell so let's streamline that a little more because I really don't like sending command if I can avoid it so I will go ahead and cancel this guy and we'll close out of command altogether so let's get that same exact thing running let's go up to tools and then build system and then you can actually set it to gulp and yours is probably set to automatic or something of that sort right now go ahead and click on gulp and now you can click control B to build and that same process will now run inside of sublime so that way you don't have to leave the program you can kinda leave this guy open at the bottom and see what's happening and if it airs out or anything like that you'll be able to see it directly in sublime you want to switch windows so same process if I change anything 
styles or anything like that, it's automatically going to reload over here in my browser without me even having to do anything. This is very convenient and hopefully you'll find a lot of use for it and hopefully you'll be able to dissect my gulp file a little bit and make some of this functionality uh, come to your applications. And this works the same for the application itself. So if I wanted to change the body to background color of red, I can do that and it'll do it live, compile all the files and reload it in the browser instantly. So there you have it, very short, very brief, very quick and to the point and um, I hope that'll help you guys at least pull down our projects and play around a little bit. Um, I'll explain some of these tools more in depth in the next video when I get into the pre-compiled codes like less and um, gulp using to actually compile whole directories full of JavaScript. Um, but for now, this is how you pull down a project and I hope you've learned something. And if you head on over to our website, I please, please, please need you guys to enter for a free Madness Labs t-shirt. All you have to do is like a post or suggest a business that needs a management system. Anything you can do um, to help spread the madness a little bit and we'll send a t-shirt your way. Alright guys, this has been Bobby from Madness Labs. Have a great week.